In the summer of 1863, one of the most pivotal battles of the War's Rebellion occurred. No, not that one in Pennsylvania. The Siege of Vicksburg and the opening of the Mississippi River. Vicksburg was a sign of things to come. The following year, at the tail end of the Overland Campaign in Virginia, because of its recognized significance, Vicksburg was among the first military parks created. But over the course of its over 100 year existence, the park has been mutilated by about half its size. This is a story of Vicksburg's National Military Park and its shrinking boundaries. visit the Vicksburg National Military Park today, and you pick up a map at the visitor center, you're left with a bit of a head scratcher. There's a park with Union and Confederate Avenues skirting along the two battle line from the railroad cut north and then west to the Mississippi. However, the southern part of the map is devoid of preserved land. There's a continuation of Confederate Avenue and the many monuments erected by the rebellious states along it. But all there is, is a park land, but not National Park Service protected land. Not to mention the atrociously close proximity of Interstate 20. What happened here? Was there no battle in the southern part of the city? Or did early preservationists forget about this section of the battlefield? In the course of the over 40 days, from May 18 to July 4, 1863, the Siege of Arabians around Vicksburg, U.S. and rebel forces created an integrate system of trenches, approach trenches, supply trenches, which made the city's fortification into a citadel. Multiple U.S. assaults against the city failed to bring about the breakthrough. Mines exploded under the enemy lines, failed to bring about the desired effect. It was the face of starvation that forced the surrender of the city, which had suffered from unrelenting artillery fire in the course of the siege. The victory at Vicksburg did not immediately open the Mississippi River, as the rebel garrison at Port Hudson in Louisiana did not surrender for another five days. Even then, Ship traffic still faced harassment from the banks. The victory was universally seen as a great achievement, as it broke the enemy territory into two and would make it far more difficult to get supplies from the Trans-Mississippi region to, say, Virginia. As a result, in 1899, Congress created the Vicksburg National Military Park under the auspices of the War Department. The park initially encompassed the entirety of the U.S. and rebel lines as they snaked around Vicksburg. The park, by 1920, contained 1,322 acres of land and 32 miles of road. The park's founders were proud 
that the park contained all the land involved during the Siege of Vicksburg. The Great Depression era work programs brought pavement to the park grounds and long overdue drainage to deal with erosion problems. In addition, there were many trees planted, which have given the park a rather ahistorical look, considering the two lines are often invisible to modern visitors. This park map from 1952 gives a good illustration of the different layout of the park. One can see Union Confederate Avenues as they are still today in the northern section of the park. Then, Confederate Avenue continues on all the way to South Ford on the Mississippi River, with small cul-de-sacs branching off of Confederate Avenue towards the U.S. line in the southern part of the battlefield. There are other differences to consider. Sherman Avenue on the north side is integrated into the park tour. Furthermore, there are far more entry points into the park, where today the trip through the park is a self-contained unit until the visitor reaches the Vicksburg National Cemetery and Fort Hill, where the only other exit and entry of the park exists. The 1952 map illustrates a much deeper integration of the park into the city's road network, with some city streets entering onto Confederate Avenue. The obvious question is, what happened that the park became a self-contained unit and lost its southern half? By 1953, housing development was increasingly encroaching on the park. That year, nine new developments were under construction. Adding to the contentious atmosphere was the public access to the park road system, especially the southern part of the battlefield was under threat as the city continued to expand in that direction. This created a dilemma. As long as Confederate Avenue remained a federal roadway that was part of the National Military Park, it was going to divide the city into a northern and southern section. As a result, the city suggested a swap. In return for ownership and control, over parts of Confederate Avenue in the south, allowed farther southward development, the National Park Service would receive title to parcels of land owned by the city. In November 1951, the National Park Service approved the transfer without public consultation or making the deal public knowledge. When the deal did become publicly known, in June 1952, the citizenry of Vicksburg was outraged, and the Vicksburg Historical Society voiced its opposition to the deal. There was worry that the opening of the land on the southern part to development would destroy the historic landscape of the battlefield, as people did not think the city capable of protecting Confederate Avenue's historic character. The concerned citizens made a counter-proposal that the National Park Service would retain control of Confederate Avenue, as well as the monuments along the route. The city, however, would get the spur roads and land along the waterfront near the cemetery. The National Park Service and city officials agreed with the plan, but warned about Confederate Avenue being transferred. The threat increased. In February 1956, the Mississippi Highway Department obtained land from the park for a truck weight station along US 80. The land opposite Naval Circle was exchanged for lands considered essential for the protection of the park, which the state had purchased for the exchange. In 1963, President Kennedy authorized the acquisition of 544 acres of land for the park and transfer of 125 acres of land to the city of Vicksburg. The city obtained the southern section of Confederate Avenue, as well as Spurs, Indiana Avenue, Iowa Avenue, Halls Ferry Road, 
formerly Illinois Avenue and Wisconsin Avenue. Furthermore, the city received an access road to the cemetery. Ironically, while the park surrendered a significant portion of the Confederate trench line in the deal, that also placed five state monuments outside of park boundaries. Yet, the park remained responsible and retained ownership of these monuments. Another transfer occurred in October 1963 in a deal with Warren County. The park handed over Sherman Avenue and McCann Circle Road but the county gave the park access to Graveyard Road. However, the park did not get access to historic Jackson Road. If one looks closely, one can still see these many changes and realignments on the modern road map of Vicksburg. In the northern section, there's the awkwardly aligned Lover's Lane, which runs almost parallel was the Confederate Avenue Park Road. Most obvious is Sky Farm Avenue at the end of the park in the northeastern corner. And then, just a bit south of that location, the strange two Confederate Avenues running parallel to each other. I wonder how that works on a GPS. And finally, there is a still somewhat visible section where Confederate Avenue once extended to the southern part of the battlefield. The connection now being done by the ironically named Mission 66. It is a sad situation that a park so early preserved as Vicksburg and preserved in such a great detail has been mutilated. The expansion of Vicksburg in all the urban areas in the United States in the 1950s and 60s placed heavy burdens on cities. And it's sad to see that Vicksburg lost so much in the course of only two decades. It's a powerful reminder, even when you have a substantially protected national park, you cannot let your guard down. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.